In this video, we're going to learn how to produce a Folium map in a Python application based on CSV data from the web. So we're going to learn how to read the CSV data into a Python application and manipulate the data so that it's in the format that we need for the map. And then we're going to produce the Folium map and we're going to see how to do that with a Python application in a Jupyter notebook. Now, as you can see, Folium builds on the data wrangling strengths of Python, and it also builds on the mapping library called Leaflet.js. And this is a JavaScript library for producing maps. And we're going to produce a map of electric vehicle charging stations in Connecticut. And we're going to do that from a raw CSV file that you can download from this link, which I'll leave below the video. And you can also get this data in JSON and XML format. Now I've downloaded the CSV file and I've got this in my local directory here. It's called evchargingstations.csv and we have a Jupyter notebook open and we have a reference to that file name here. So what we're going to do to begin this video is we're going to read this file into our Python notebook and we're going to transform some of that data so that it's in the right format for the map. Now let's quickly look at the data file here. You can see that it's got a bunch of columns here and each row represents one of the EV charging stations in Connecticut. Now we're only interested in two of these columns, the station name, which is in the left hand side, and this column on the right hand side, it's called new georeferenced column. And that refers to a point, which is a longitude and latitude pair. We're gonna extract both of these columns and we're gonna transform this column on the right hand side so that we get the longitude and the latitude from the column. So let's go back to the notebook and we're going to open this file in read mode so with open file name and the mode is r for read and we'll open that as csv file we're now going to read that file using python's csv library which i've imported at the top here and let me make the text a little bit bigger here so let's create a reader object and that's going to be equal to a dictionary reader from the csv module and we pass the csv file to that dictionary reader in order to read in that file once we have the reader object, we can then iterate over it. So for row in reader, we can then, let's say to begin with, print the row, and we'll do that for one of the rows and we can see what data we've got here. So we're reading in one single row from the CSV file and we have the station name here, which you can see, and also this georeference column that we're also interested in. And we also have a bunch of other columns that we're not going to be extracting from this data. So what I'm gonna do above the with open statement is I'm gonna define two keys, and that's the two keys that we're interested in from the file. We have the station name and the georeferenced column. And I'm also gonna create an empty list here called records, and that's gonna store each of the records in this file that we're extracting. And then we're going to remove the print statement here. And for each row in the dictionary reader, we're going to append to that empty list another dictionary with just the two keys that we're interested in so we're going to use a dictionary comprehension here and it's going to be the key name as well as the value of the row at that key for each key and the keys tuple that we've defined up here in other words for each row in the csv file we are appending to this empty list a dictionary containing the values for these two keys. So let's execute that cell and we can then go to the cell below and we're going to print out the first record that we've extracted in that process. And you can see we've now got a dictionary here with the station name and that new georeferenced column. So that's the first part of the process. We're reading in the data and we're extracting the two columns that we need. What we're now going to do is we're going to manipulate this georeference column here and extract the longitude, which is the first value, and the latitude, which is the second value. Now this value is a string from the CSV file, so we're gonna to have to perform some string manipulation with Python in order to get that in the correct format. So let's work with the first record here. So we're gonna set a variable called record equal to that first record. And what we're gonna do is below that, we're going to extract the coordinates as you can see here. And that gives us back this point string here containing the longitude and latitude. Now from this point string, we need to get the numbers within these two brackets. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the Python string.split function and we're going to pass a character to that and it's going to be the bracket that you see here. If we then print that out we can see we get back a Python list and the first element in that list contains point and the second element contains the two numbers with a bracket at the end. So what we're going to do is extract that second element and we can use the minus one index for that. That will get the last element in the Python list and then we're going to split it again by the other bracket that you can see here. So we're building up this statement. Let's execute this and see what we get. And we now get two elements in the resulting Python list. The first one contains the two numbers separated by a space and that's the one we are interested in so we're going to index in here at element zero and finally we can use the dot split function again and that's going to split on the white space between the two numbers. If we execute that 
we now get back a Python list containing the two numbers. The longitude is the first one and the latitude is the second. We can then unpack these into two variables, firstly the longitude and secondly the latitude. So let's now print out the longitude just to make sure that we have the number for that value. And we can do the same for the latitude here. So we have the two numbers from this string, this point string. We've extracted them using some string manipulation in Python. So this is now working, but the last thing we need to do to manipulate this data, if we look at the type of the longitude, we're gonna see that that is actually a string. We need to convert that from a string to a floating point number in order to work with folium's mapping function. Now, in order to do this, we're going to create a for loop above here, and we're gonna say for each record in the records, and remember, we built these records up in the cell above here. This is the empty list that we populated while reading the file. So for each one of those records, we extract the longitude and the latitude from the new georeference column. And then what we're gonna do is we're actually going to add two new keys to the record that we are iterating over. Firstly, the longitude, we're gonna set that equal to the longitude after using the float function to convert it from a string to a floating point number. And we're then going to do the exact same for the latitude. And that's gonna add the longitude and the latitude to each dictionary in that resulting list of dictionaries. So let's now execute this cell. And if we take a look at the records, or rather the first record in the data, we now have these two new keys, the longitude and the latitude have been added to the dictionary. So now we have the data in the correct format. Let's create a new cell and we're going to introduce folium to this workflow. And we're gonna create a map based on the longitude and the latitude of each station. So at the top of the cell, let's import Folium and you can execute that to make sure that Folium is in your environment. If it's not, you need to install Folium. If you're using Anaconda, you can do that with Anaconda Navigator or the Anaconda Prompt. If you're in a normal Python environment, you can use something like pip or poetry. If we go back to the Folium documentation here, there's a section for installation and you can see the two commands here to install Folium with pip and with conda. So let's go back to our notebook and we're gonna create a folium map and we'll give it a variable name of map. And we can do this with the folium.map function and we give that a location which will be the center point of the map. And I'm gonna center this on the geographical center of the USA and that's that coordinate there, 39 and minus 98. And we can also pass the starting zoom of the map and that's zoom start and we're gonna set that equal to four. If we then render the map in the Jupyter Notebook, you can see that we have this folium map it's actually a leaflet.js map, but it's rendered by Folium and it's centered in this case in the location that we provide, which is the geographical center of the USA. So we're able to see this map. Let's now actually plot some useful data and some markers on this map. Let's go back up to the cell above. And what we're gonna do underneath the map that we have here is we're going to iterate over each record in this records list of dictionaries that we built up above. And we're going to extract the latitude and the longitude from that record and we access the key of latitude and longitude and we build up a tuple called coordinates. And then we can use another function in Folium. It's the folium.marker function. This will create marker objects in Folium and we can pass the coordinates of where that marker should be located to that function. And the marker objects, and in fact, all objects in Folium have an add to function and then we can pass the map that we want to add them to. And then if we execute this, we should now see that we have a bunch of markers. They're centered in Connecticut because this is a data set of electric vehicle charging stations in Connecticut. So what we're gonna to do to make this a little bit more clearer is we're going to adjust the starting location. Instead of the center of the USA, we're gonna make it the center of Connecticut, and then we're gonna increase the zoom level at the start. So let's remove this center location here from the folium.map function and I'm gonna paste this one in here. Apparently this is the center point of Connecticut according to Google. And instead of a zoom start of four, we're gonna make this nine to increase the zoom at the start when the map is first rendered. So let's re-execute this. And you can see we have a map of Connecticut now, and we have a marker for all the electric vehicle charging stations in the state. And you can see we have a lot of them here in the center of the state. And if we zoom in, you see that's the city of Hartford. And there's also a lot of these stations at the southwest of the state as well. I think there's a lot of cities in Connecticut at the southwest, which will explain some of that. So what we've done here is quite interesting. We've taken raw data in a CSV file or a JSON file. We've manipulated it using Python, and then we've used Folium in order to produce this map of data. And this is the kind of thing that makes Python very useful. You can take data that is just in a tabular form and you can then produce visualizations and maps that make it more obvious to non-technical people what the data is actually about. So this is electric vehicle charging stations in Connecticut. Now you can do more than this with Folium. 
For example, if we click one of these markers, nothing is appearing, but we can actually add a pop-up to the marker. And that pop-up, let's say in our case, we want to show the station name. So let's go back up to the cell here where we have the folium.marker function. We pass the coordinates to that function, but we can also pass a keyword argument called pop-up. And that's the text that we want to display on the pop-up. Now we have a record dictionary here, and we're gonna copy that. And that record dictionary has another key called station name. That's the actual name of the electric vehicle charging station. So if we execute this, we can then go back to the map and we can go through each of these, click them, and you can see what's the name of the station. So we're seeing how to build up this map and introduce markers and pop-ups. But one thing about this is it's very cluttered. You can see here that we have all these markers in the southwest of Connecticut, for example. This very cluttered map is not particularly appealing. So what we can do is we can actually introduce something called clusters to this map. So let's go to Folium's documentation. There's a plugin for this here. It's called the Fast Marker Cluster. And what that's going to do is it's going to take these dense areas of markers and it's going to produce a cluster that you can then click and see more information. Let's actually implement this so you can better see what this looks like. Let's scroll back up here and at the top, along with importing Folium, I'm going to import from folium.plugins the fast marker cluster. If we go back to the documentation, you can see that it takes data as an argument, and this is a list of lists, and each inner list has the shape of latitude and longitude. So we're gonna to need to extract those in that format from every record in the data. So let's go back to the Jupyter Notebook, and we're gonna create two list comprehensions here. So let's start by extracting the latitudes here. We're gonna use the list comprehension, and we're gonna index in at the latitude, and that's gonna happen for each A in records. And it's gonna be very similar for the longitudes, so I'm going to just copy this and we'll paste it below. And we can change the name of the variable to longitudes and we can get that key from the dictionary as well. So now we should extract the latitudes and the longitudes into two lists. Now remember to use the fast marker cluster, we need to have lists of lists and each inner list is a latitude and a longitude. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use the zip function in Python. Let's remove this for loop below here and we're gonna create a fast marker cluster object. And remember this object takes a data first parameter here. So we're gonna pass the data to that and we're going to set that equal to a list of zipping together these latitudes and longitudes. And finally, we can then add that to the folium map using the add to function. If we then execute this, hopefully we're going to see this map. But now you can see we have these nice clusters in the map and we can see where most of the clusters of markers are. For example, in the city of Hartford, that region has 62 electric vehicle charging stations. And at the southwest of the state, we have 42 and 45. In in these particular regions. And you can clearly see that there's less of the stations at the northwest and northeast of the state. And this is very simple to do with Folium. All we need to do is create this fast marker cluster object, and then we pass a list of data to that object. And the fast marker cluster takes these latitudes and longitudes, and it's smart enough to know how to cluster them together based on their location. And the cool thing here is if we zoom in, for example, to Hartford, you can see that these clusters move about as you zoom more into the map. And if you click a particular cluster you get taken into the area that contains each of those stations and you can then see more information. So these are dynamic clusters and as you zoom through the map they are reallocated based on your zoom level. Very useful functionality in Folium and in Python if you're creating maps. So that's all for this video. We've seen how to take a raw CSV file bring it into our Python application and transform some of the values and then produce a folium map based on that data, which shows the locations of some of the objects in our data set. We've seen how to create the folium map and how to add markers to it, and also how to create these clusters of markers based on the locations. Now I'm planning to do more videos on mapping. In the next one, we're gonna see how to do this within a Django application and display a static map in a Django app. But for now, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next video.